All right. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Shanika Wiley. I am the vice president for the Wagner College um, National Student Nursing oh, like Association. Like right. <laughs> and um, we're doing the live stream. I am a second degree nursing student, and I have with me. Oh, I'm Julia <laughs> Butler. Um, I'm the mentorship chair. Uh, position of our Wagner College chapter of the um, Nurses Association and we're going to be doing this live stream to kind of answer any questions. Um, we are going to be getting those questions as you send them in. Um, please know that there's like a little bit of a delay so we'll be answering them as soon as we see them and um, we're going to be hopefully decreasing a little bit of anxiety, answering some questions and boosting your confidence going into orientation, which is Thursday, August 25th, and we can't wait to see you all there. Um, but we're first going to start the live stream with Avery from uh, Financial Aid. Um, Avery is the assistant director and will be kind of giving us a full overview of concerns um, about a second degree, um, second bachelor's program. Um, Thank you. Of course. So as second degree um, seeking students, there is, uh, the financial aid looks a little bit different than it did in your initial undergraduate degree. Um, namely, uh, second degree students, if you have a bachelor's degree already, you're not eligible for a federal Pell Grant, you might be limited as to what you can take on a subsidized Stafford loan because there's a time limit on the Stafford loan as well now. Um, the most common thing also, the most common conversation that we have about second degree students is that if you borrowed federal loans during your first undergraduate degree, um, you may have limited eligibility remaining for your second undergraduate degree. Um, specifically if you're an independent student, the aggregate loan limit is uh, capped at $31,000. So if you have already borrowed, say, $20,000 in your undergraduate degree the first time, you might be to what you can borrow on the federal side, um, in which case we would have a conversation about um, private student lenders um, or alternative ways to finance education. Okay. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can uh, send them in to us and we'll try to answer them on the live stream as we see them. So don't be shy. Um, should we jump to Sorry, just checking that everything. Yes, we can. Okay, I can around if um, if anybody does have any questions yes. um, specifically for me. Um, do you Sure, yeah, if you have any questions about your financial aid package or if you're awaiting a package still um, and you would like to speak to us, you can either call or email the office. We're in the office um, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4.30. Um, and right now we do have a pretty high volume of inquiries, so I just recommend that you uh, be patient in terms of the response time, but we will get back to you. Um, the email address is finaid, F-I-N-A-I-D, at wagner.edu. Uh, the phone number is 718-390-3183. And you are located in we're, Cunard? We're on the first floor of Cunard Hall, and we do make appointments. Um, we do make appointments based on availability, so if anybody does have any, anything uh, pressing or um, a deeper matter, I do see a question um, that popped up that is asking about book vouchers specifically. Um, book vouchers are typically handled by the bursar's office. Um, the way that it works is that we have to have the funding in place. So financial aid has to have done our part in terms of awarding and completed any verification or anything else that we needed to do. Um, and once all the awards are in place, uh, the bursar is able to see that information. Um, but the book vouchers themselves are issued through the bursar's office. So what I would do is after you've turned everything in and received your final award letter, um, 
then I would give the person office a call and ask when you can expect a book voucher and um, also if there's anything additional that you need to do with them in order to get that. And I believe the phone number for the Bullet for Verisar's office is 718-390-3112 uh, and they're open Monday through Friday 8.30 to 4.30 as well. And the financial aid office works very closely with the merchant's office, I'll add that, um, in that if you do have some matter that's going on with financial aid, it might be good to just let us know that you need a book voucher, um, just so we can have it on our radar um, as well, and we can reach out to Bursar on your behalf if we need to. Sounds amazing. Okay. Well, thank you for having me, and I will hang around, like I said, if anybody does have any other questions, if anything else pops up. Okay, Thanks thank so you so All much. Right. No problem, thank you. All right. So now we're going to transition into one of our faculty members is going to join us, um, Dr. Dowling Castronovo, and she is an amazing faculty member that we've had in lecture, and uh, she's going to kind of help uh, bring that kind of aside into the live stream and give information about classes and um, the world of being the professor. <laughs> well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to Wagner Nursing. Uh, I need to say that this live stream really wasn't an idea of faculty, staff, or administration. This was something that was born from student interest a couple of years ago. Um, we had second degree students like yourself um, getting that letter in the mail, very excited that you were accepted to our nursing school. Uh, and then the list of questions would come. And so what second degree students did a few years ago is they started this orientation, which continues. And as Julia mentioned, it will be on the 25th of this month. So we look forward to seeing you all in person there. So spread the word if you're starting any type of social media that maybe I'm not savvy with. Um, and, and then last year we did this live stream for the first time. So both Shanika and Julia were in your seats or wherever you are right now, right, um, on the reverse side of this. And they were just sharing with us before we started this live stream about, ooh, how they, you know, here they are a year later and have learned so much and have grown so much. Yes. And that the, that anxiety is not so much there, but they could definitely connect to it and relive some of those butterflies, <laughs> right, before we started this. Um, so I'm thrilled that uh, the second degree students who come to Wagner Nursing um, continue this tradition and it just becomes stronger and better. Um, we might not answer all your questions today, um, and that's okay. You're going to have plenty of our contact um, information. Um, so don't fret and, and save a lot of those questions for the 25th. Um, that's, we're going to get you to the 25th, and then you're going to live through 15 months. Um, and you'll see these two lovely ladies there. You'll see myself and at least eight others. Mm -hmm. um, so they'll, they'll be a bigger force that night. Okay, well, we should probably just do the frequently asked questions now. Also, um, in the live stream email that was sent out earlier, there was a link um, to the orientation peer leaders. Um, Dr. Dowling was just mentioning that there are going to be eight others. So there is a link provided in that email um, that you can click on and, and see little bios of the ten of us that are going to be doing it. Mm -hmm. Kind of look at our faces, mm -hmm. see who you're going to be seeing that night. That's amazing. And yeah, just be more confident coming in that. We were in your seats, and it's going to be great, and um, it's going to go by fast. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so we have the welcome packet with us in case anyone wants to reference that um, with their questions um, stemming from any of those pages. But we also have um, some frequently asked questions that came from the amazing um, School of Nursing office that people have been calling in and concerned about you know, the start of school, anticipating the needs of the first day of the first week. Um, so we have some of those questions that we want to address here to just give everyone uh, the answers in case, you know, you weren't the person that called, but maybe you were thinking along the same lines of that subject of what about this or do I have to go purchase that or anything like that. So we're going to kind of lead with that um, if you have anything to add in or um, to say about that, uh, that you'd like us to clarify at any time, just um, don't be afraid to, to send that comment. 
So we can start off with ATI. Um, there's a lot of questions coming in um, wondering what ATI is in the welcome packet. It references it that it's standardized testing. Um, there's books involved. There's an initial fee um, out of two fees that um, will be paid and a second fee that will be paid at a different time. So ATI is basically a complement um, to the structure of Wagner Schools of Nursing's lectures and, and lecture books. And what it is is kind of um, NCLEX prep, um, I guess is the way that we talk about it the most. Um, it's not the textbooks that you use for your class. So in the first classes um, of the first semester, you'll have textbooks assigned um, for those. The ATI books that you're going to buy all at once um, complement those textbooks that, and the lectures that the teachers stem from those um, textbooks. They complement that material. They might have it in more of a condensed form. Um, sometimes they have a different uh, way of giving you different charts in their little textbooks and things like that. Um, it's completely supplemental. It's not the main uh, stream of what the Wagner School of Nursing is. It's just to enhance our success, to kind of give us the additional books to reference, questions to practice on in the back of the chapters. Um, but it's something completely separate, but in a way they kind of go together. So with ATI, you are going to need those books, um, but you will also need the books from the bookstore as well that are lecture specific. So it seems as if you're getting all of these books all at once. And we were there too. We were thinking, what are, what are these bundles? What are these ATI books? They're two completely different things, but they are necessary. And the ATI books are going to go through the entire 15 months. You're not going to have to repurchase ATI books again at a later date. And uh, it's, it's like an initial you got to have them in the beginning, but then they'll help you throughout the whole the whole program. So they're really amazing, um, and they come in a box, all packaged, ready for every single person. And there's not going to be a shortage of them. So just know going in that they are necessary, but um, it's a one-time purchase, and everyone gets one. And they, from our experience, they are amazing in helping supplement material and things like that. I'm just going to expand sure, just a, of a little bit on that. Um, if you have that welcome letter um, on page two, it talks about standardized testing with the ATI. And I think what's really helpful is if you can use this welcome letter, write all over it, make it into your style of a checklist. I think it makes it really doable to get all these tasks done. Uh, I think if you look at it as a whole, it's overwhelming. Um, ATI, in, in addition to the books, there are a lot of online resources, mm -hmm. and they start right now. Some of you may have done them already. Some of you may be getting ready to do them. And they're listed as one, two, three, four, right on page two. Mm -hmm. And so you want to be mindful of those. And ATI is not new to you, because in order to get into this program, you had to take the T's, which you know, in, in other language might mean that you were sipping tea, but we we're talking about the test for admission, <laughs> the T's. Okay, right? Mm -hmm. So exactly. you, you started becoming familiar with the ATI resource already, and what we do is now build on that. And what that does is it allows you to build up your knowledge level and build up your comfort. If you have test anxiety, we get as comfortable as possible because at the end of the program, you'll have a diploma which is so valuable and, and, and extra valuable because it's a Wagner nursing diploma, but you're still going to need to pass that licensing exam to get the license um, so that you can practice as a registered professional nurse. So, so just be mindful of that. And so it's, it's, if you hear supplemental, it's really required, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so keep that in mind because many of the courses that you're going to take have testing that counts towards the grade that is a little bit of, of the ATI component. Not all of it, but a little bit of it. So that, again, we get you comfortable not only with the learning, but also with your performance and testing. Does that make sense, ladies? Yes, Does definitely. that sound yes. reasonable? Okay. And just to go off the testing one more time, those one, two, three, and four modules, some people were concerned that you needed the books for those if you haven't completed them yet. 
Um, there are about skills. Uh, it's You don't need the books to complete those. Um, mm -hmm. They do need to be printed out for day one to be handed in. Um, but don't get too stressed out about the um, what you have to have on day one with them. Just, mm -hmm. just go ahead and take those. Um, they're kind of just showing what knowledge and skills you might may or may not already have. Um, mm -hmm. It's just a baseline uh, introduction to ATI to get a feel for how it all works. And um, great point. Don't yeah, just take great it. Great point. Don't worry what your score is on mm -hmm. those. Just mm -hmm. check off that you've done it, print yes. it out, have it ready for that first day. If English is a second language, there is that optional module that we do recommend, and we're always um, open to feedback uh, for the students who have chosen to do that. They have found it helpful. So I would, I would strongly suggest looking at that if, if that meets your um, need. Um, and do it before school starts, because this is a great example of um, you can, it's hard to play catch up. Okay, mm -hmm. So to try to get to these things. Definitely the mandatory, but the optional if the optional applies to you, please consider doing it while you still have uh, a little a little bit of budge room before the semester begins. Yes, exactly. I think that was most of the ATI that I had referenced. Mm -hmm. Yep. Else? No. Alright, that's on Um We're going to go into the CPR. A lot of people have um, questions about the CPR certifications. I know there was a flyer that went out in the welcome packet. People were concerned about registering for it and how long it was going to take and, and things like that. So with the CPR, I came into the nursing program without having an up-to-date uh, CPR certification. And I was a little anxious about it at first, but with that flyer that they provide you and those dates as well, um, I know most of uh, the people that I uh, interact with on a daily basis that are in the program uh, a lot of us went through that certification. Um, some people were wondering why we don't do it through the nursing office. Um, it's because our school doesn't provide that. Um, we do have to refer to um, Miss Buko uh, to do it, and she was really great. Um, it, yes, it might take her a day or two to get back, but she is uh, uh, doing it out of the generosity of herself to get the nursing students there. Um, I think we met at the hospital to do it last time, yes. which directions and locations will be provided and everything like that. Um, but um, just refer to that flyer and have confidence in it that our professors and the faculty here really are setting you up for the success um, if you don't have it and uh, it will help enable you to get what is required. Now if you do have one, we have had a couple of questions about if you're already CPR certified. Um, does that count, or what what certifications you may or may not have had, or they're just renewed, but it's something different. We only do take one um, certification, and it's the American Heart Association BLS for Healthcare Providers, and it's a CPR AED program. That is specific to the um, School of Nursing requirement. Any other certifications um, are going to be void. And um, in that point, then you can just sit with everybody else that's going to be taking the ones from the flyer. But um, please know that there's there's specific reasoning behind um, having that certification. It's for the healthcare provider, and um, the faculty do a great job in organizing that for us and and rallying us together on all those dates. And don't worry about having to get that first date that's on the flyer. Um, I know plenty of people that registered for all of them and. Uh, you were ready to go out in clinicals um, that a uh, couple weeks into the first semester. Don't stress about getting uh, everything done at first or having to come in with the CPR, I mean, uh, certification because you don't even go to clinicals until it's the, yeah, the sixth week into the semester. So everything is campus-based um, up until then and you are ready and you will be prepped for that when it comes to it. Um, but just have confidence that those CPR um, certifications on the flyer are going to be amazing and uh, just email her to, uh, to register for it and she will respond and uh, get back to you. So yeah. And for anyone wondering how it actually looks, mm -hmm. uh, if you may think that yours is similar, my might be the but uh, yeah, this is how it will look.
fit. <laughs> so we have another question that actually came in. Did you want to say anything else about that, Dr. Bowen? No. Okay. So the next question is asking about the amount of classes that we have to register for. Uh, what is the difference between the labs and actual clinicals? So if you actually go to your welcome packet, um, it's a page that looks like this for those uh, following along. So, okay. Um, because I do advising for students, um, no matter who, uh, it seems like this first page that they look at for all the registration is so overwhelming. Again, take it line by line. Trust that our faculty and our staff will be looking at all the class rosters. So if you're missing one little component of what's on this page, you'll get an email at some point. We hope that that won't happen. And that's why we do all this orientation work, et cetera, so that we'll streamline it as easy, easy as possible for you. What's interesting about the nursing courses is that since you've all taken anatomy and physiology, you registered for a lecture, and then you registered usually for a lab, and that was two registration clicks, so to speak, right? What ends up happening with, with these courses is that you register for fundamentals of nursing, okay? And so you're saying, what is she talking about? Because okay. that's the jargon that comes with many disciplines, right? There's that inside speak that we have. Um, so what does that mean? So the very first class, NR351, N2, Dimensions of Health Promotion in the Community. Well, the textbook that goes with that is Fundamentals of Nursing, so that you'll hear what the, the nickname is, is we call it Fundamentals of Nursing, or Fundies, or Fundamentals, etc. But that course has several components. So instead of a science lab that you're familiar with, right, it will have a clinical, right? And so that would be one of any of those C08, C09, all the way down to C14. And then we have what's called simulation. So many of you, you maybe researched different nursing programs, you learned about high fidelity simulation and how we practice on these high-tech robots before we go out into the field, right? So that you need to register for as well. And we'll explain all of this in much more detail. Right now you're looking at the mechanics of just do the registration and we'll explain everything on week one. So that becomes the 3-5 CSA. It almost sounds like a TV show, right? CSA. And that will say, if you read all the way to the end, it's SimLab. And that's the lovely jargon that we'll use, SimLab. Then you go down one more and and our 351 CP. Okay, Wagner Nursing is very much in line with the mission of Wagner College. We do a good deal of service learning, experiential learning. We bring it to the community, we bring the community here. So many of our nursing courses have community based projects. And this is a way that we capture that, okay, on your um, official transcript. And it's a way we have it tracked in our system so that we have the necessary faculty to teach you, etc. So that, that's the behind the scenes more. And so what I would say is just go through each section, okay, for each of these classes. The next one would be NR351, the next one would be NR355, and the next one would be NR356. And again, you'll see us on the 25th. More importantly, you're going to see me and other faculty, okay, mm -hmm on day one of orientation on that first day of classes. So follow that, that um, schedule and we'll give you the first week schedule, which is unique. It's a very unique schedule the first week and then you'll fall in line um, with what your My Wagner will be telling you where to go and what time, etc. Mm -hmm. Does that sound like enough information? Mm -hmm. But not TMI. We don't want to give TMI today. <laughs> And that reminds me, like, one important thing that you have to get in order is your Wagner College email. Uh, that's the primary source of how you're going to stay in contact with not only uh, other nursing students, but also your professors. So please get into the habit of checking that daily. Um, do you want to add anything about it? No. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, as soon as uh, I started mine, I just synced it to my phone, yeah. um, just as my Gmail was already. and still, you know, um, it's still streaming in. Um, I have it to fetch it all the time because emails can come in at any time and you just want to keep up to date on anything that professors might have or anyone um, from the Wagner College community might send out that, you know, is usually pertinent information that we need to know. Mm -hmm. Okay. So to kind of go off of classes and clinicals and things like that, we can kind of touch on the fact that 
uh, you aren't going to be going out to clinicals, as I already stated, until the first six weeks are over and you get introduced into what to expect and there's things that go along with that. But um, the uniforms uh, that we get for clinicals, um, which obviously will not be needed on the first day, um, will be coming from Life Uniform. And there are some questions coming in. Uh, do you have to go to Life Uniform? Um, I already have X, Y, and Z. Can I just use that? The thing about Life Uniform is, is that they've been so great at working with Wagner College School of Nursing. That when I walked in there last last summer, and I told the woman that um, I was with Wagner College and I was going to the nursing program, she immediately was like, "Okay, I know exactly what to do. We'll get this taken care of." So. They know what scrub tops are acceptable. They know what bottoms are, uh, the pants are acceptable. They also have our patches um, that need to be sewn on to the um, shoulders of our scrub tops. And they also send out for our nursing pin name tags, yes, um, that say our name and then I think it says Wagner College uh, nursing student underneath of it. Mm -hmm. And um, Life Uniform is just they have all that information, so just um, trust in knowing that it might be out of your way to make a trip to the Life Uniform or anything like that, but please keep in mind that there's a reason because they're working with us so um, wonderfully um, and enabling that all the students come in with everything that's prepared. Um, they even have the, you know, one of the extender things for our badges and things like that, anything little. Um, that are, are going to be necessary for clinical, but um, just just have confidence in Life Uniform. They're really great. Mention when you walk in. I'm you know I'm just here for getting my things for uh, this Wagner College School of Nursing, and they'll probably be so great. Um, I know they were with me and a couple of my other friends. So uh, just Life Uniform is the place to go, and they'll make sure that you're set up for clinical success in every part of your uniform. And personally, for me, I recommend getting at least two uniforms. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you don't have time to wash the other uh, set, so it's handy to have an extra pair of uniforms. Definitely. Yeah, they, I also got my shoes there. Um, they have the shoes that are needed. Um, and they'll show you what proper lab coat to have as well. Um, and then the patches. Yeah, so at least two uniforms, uh, two tops and two pants. Um, and that's what I have written down on that. Oh, also, along with the uniforms. Now, you're not going to get this at Life uh, Uniform, but uh, what also is needed are watches with a second hand. Um, they don't want you to have a digital watch. Um, something with a second hand, definitely, and something that's washable, um, no leather or... Um, material type of yes just like that or like this it's super easy to wash and it's not, it doesn't have any cloth on it or anything like that um, so that you know when you learn how to do the respirations and uh, taking someone's pulse and different tasks like that um, you do have that second hand to keep you in sync with everything that you're learning and need to do um, so the watch um, not being digital having a second hand is a big thing um, and make sure it needs, uh, is able to be washed because further down the road when you're in clinical you'll definitely be washing constantly so you don't want to have to worry about your watch and you don't want to worry about your watch um, taking anything home with you from the clinical experience. Um, but that's getting ahead of ourselves. Just make sure it can be washed and have a second hand. Um, I know before people had questions about uh, how to get here to the college. Um, me, personally, I commute and I drive, and we do have two parking lots for students. We have a stadium parking lot, and we also have one in the tiers that you can park in. Uh, you just come in and get like a parking decal, and you stick it on your car, and you're good to go. Um, other people take the ferry. I'm not sure the train station stop, but you can also uh, take Hall. the ferry here, Whitehall. And then we have a shuttle that comes from the school to the ferry, and they're pretty good in with being in sync uh, with the time mm -hmm. that the ferry leaves and comes back. I think they have a specific schedule. Right, they have a schedule. You can actually find it online. I've looked for it. Mm -hmm. um, they also have the S66 bus that carries you right in front of the campus. So getting here, uh, 
should be fairly easy. Mm -hmm. And anticipate traffic at all times, please, mm -hmm. because I'm not from Staten Island. Um, I'm actually from Ohio, so coming when I moved to Staten Island, it's funny now because you you ask how long does it take to get somewhere, and someone will say ten minutes, but twenty with traffic. So when you're coming to uh, the first day of class or clinicals or anything like that, just anticipate leaving early because to be early is to be on time and to be on time is late. So uh, just keep that in mind whenever you're commuting or, or transporting throughout the island or any of the other boroughs or Jersey or anything like that. The ferry shuttle um, is free actually. Yes, it uh, picks you up uh, where the buses, there's uh, like an area for buses and it picks you up right there. And I, do you have to show your ID, I think? No. I'm not sure. Yeah, you just got on. ready just in case. Right. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's free. Um, I know plenty of people that take it, and uh, it's, it's no hassle at all. Mm -hmm. They're, they have a schedule. They'll be there when the ferry docks to let you off on Staten Island, and it should go uh, smoothly. And if you're a brand new student and you don't have your ID yet, just let them know you're on your way to campus. So it's orientation and to get that ID. Mm hmm Definitely. Yes. Oh, and even one time my little sister was commuting in from the city, and I had called public safety to let her know she was a sibling of a Wagner College student because she was so nervous she didn't have an ID. And it was no problem at all. They're really great um, about um, helping shuttle students and anyone else uh, back and forth. So, yeah. Okay. We can talk about the bookstore books a little bit. Um, oh, okay. So, this kind of goes into it. We just got a question that says, and What's Death and Scope? Forward should we buy? Smile, it's to see your questions that you're typing in. Yeah. So, this Death of Scope, um, that comes in the tote, right? Right. So, in the bookstore, uh, when you get the bundle of books, which we'll talk about in a second, um, they mentioned that you need a green tote. It's in the welcome packet. It says it's um, available at the bookstore. In that uh, green tote, there's going to be some medical supplies um, that are necessary for clinicals. There's going to be like a pen light, um, some scissors, some gauze, some gloves, things like that. But in that as well is a stethoscope. Now, you don't need to go out and purchase a separate, amazing, advanced stethoscope. Uh, it's, it's a little overreach for the first incoming as a new nursing student. Um, have confidence and I still use the one from the green toe. I don't know if you do, but it's really great. Um, I've passed many clinicals using that and uh, they, they'll provide it for you with that toe as long as a lot of other supplies. Um, and that's available at the bookstore. You can pick it up uh, the first day of class or that first week of class. Um, they do have uh, the amount that's necessary for all the students, and uh, there's going to be no shortage on that. Um, I know there was a question last uh, time we did this stream, how much the green tote is. Mm -hmm. um, you can actually contact the bookstore. The number is 718-390-3469, and they're open 830 to 430. You can call and ask about the prices for the tote, mm -hmm. as well as uh, for the bundles of books that we have to get, our textbooks. Um, and the bundles is something else I wanted to touch on as well. Um, the bundle of books, it says there's only two numbers that you have to uh, log in if you're ordering them um, online or, or purchasing them and then picking them up from the bookstore. The reason for that is that these textbooks the faculty and Wagner College School of Nursing knows how expensive books can be, and so they're doing the great service of trying to condense these together um, at a little bit of a reduced cost and giving us the edition, the newest edition and things like that, um, that are most available for the classes. So when you see just those two things, know that in that bundle there's going to be two to three different books. Now. In those new books, if you're someone that did in your past degree, you bought the used books or you rented them or anything like that, which is totally great. Um, here, there's access codes and there's um, online supplemental information that you use with um, scratch-off codes that are on the inside of the book that are to be used. Um, these are really useful in 
expanding on the information and more practice questions. So we were talking, it's kind of like a buyer beware that uh, if, if you don't want to buy those bundles, know that you might be spending X amount of dollars on a rented or a used book, but you might not get those access codes that are going to be necessary um, uh, for the, the courses. So you might end up actually spending more money uh, to purchase those codes separately. I know a couple of people that ran into that problem. Um, they ended up taking more money out of their pocket than just buying the bundles from the bookstore. It seems like a lot. College books are no joke at any point with the prices, but uh, the professors and the faculty do a great job at trying to condense that in the fact that these books are separately a lot more money than what we paid for um, for, the, for the actual bundles. So kind of come into it with the sense that you are making the commitment to uh, put so much money up front for the new books in that bundle, but if you're going the route of the used or the rented, just know that uh, you might end up spending more money for those codes, and it's um, kind of at your own discretion. Um, I know I've purchased the bundles, I've purchased all of them from the bookstore, and I've never regretted it once because I had unlimited access to everything that the book provided, and a couple of the other classmates, they weren't able to do it or they had to purchase it separately, and it was quite the headache for them um, as well. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean over just oh, to sure, read out yes. some of these questions. Um, so, Nicole, hi, how are you? Um, can't wait to place a, a face with the name. Um, you're, you're asking as a new student, what should you expect in terms of the curriculum for the upcoming year? Um, I think like any nursing curriculum, it's quite rigorous. Um, so, um, probably heard during the interview process and such, you know, to please make sure that you have your lifestyle in order so that you can really dedicate full-time um, work to this full-time mm -hmm. curriculum. Um, the students always do a fabulous job, and I know you're going to do a fabulous job on the 25th. Um, they'll do a, a, a brief overview of what it's been like for them up until this point. Mm -hmm. um, so they'll let you know a little bit about what year one was like and what the summer session was like, because they just finished their summer sessions of courses. Um, if you haven't looked already, look at our website. We have it pretty up to date so that you can see what we refer to as four modules, which is the fall semester being module one, the second one being module two, the summer being module three, and then the next fall semester, module four, will really outline the coursework that you'll, you're locked into. There's no electives or anything like that. Um, so you'll get to see all the topics covered and such. Um, it says here also, is there anything that I should study or prepare? Um, I would say just focusing on that page two, um, making sure that you are registered with ATI, you're doing those four components. If English is a second language, uh, remember there's that module as well. Um, many students that I have found to have easy success, because I think the majority of our students have success, but to have easy success, um, they tend to come prepared. So all of what Shonika and um, Julia are talking about, you know, having the books and being prepared and having all that ready, knowing how to get here and allowing the extra time to get here, having the ID or the parking decal before week one, I think that that's all really essential. Coming on the 25th is important because if you haven't learned what our campus is about, you won't know what the hawk's nest is. You won't know where the WAG is. And so that's an important part of the Wagner campus culture that we'll start to talk about that night, right? You know, where is the library? Where's the gym? If I want to let off some steam. Oh, there is a swimming pool. You know, things like that. So you need to learn about those um, uh, aspects of, of the Wagner College community as well. Right. And I just want to touch on that really briefly. Uh, the classes are extremely rigorous. And one of the things that um, actually you, Dr. Dowling, recommended was to get a planner, please. <laughs> if you haven't gotten one now, get one, because it's going to help you stay on top of things. Like, you can't forget anything. You have to remember every single mm -hmm. thing, mm -hmm. every single detail. So if you haven't done so already, get yourself a planner. And we give pearls. The students give pearls. Because I've had some students that have been way more organized than me. So if some people like some of my organizing ways, mm -hmm. many times it's maybe a student has taught me a thing or two. Right. And we'll share that. You know, we'll definitely share that at the orientation night right. and during week one. Mm -hmm. During week one.
Okay, so the next question is from Catherine. Oh, I'm sorry, Elizabeth. How do I know I registered correctly? Do you want to... Hmm. You can go on to find Wagner and you can cross check what you have registered for against that sheet. And maybe, Shanika, you had it all ready sure. before to, to hold up. And you can cross check it against that. And then what I would suggest is just take a deep breath and know that at some point there are human cross checks that are going to happen. And they continue to happen during the first week of classes. Because every once in a while, we have a student who has financial aid and something goes a little funny with it and the financial aid, if it doesn't show in the system, it'll drop their registration and then that causes a whole set of anxieties and such, rightfully so. And so we monitor the class registrations in all of these different sections for at least the first two weeks of classes. Mm -hmm. So it, it's one of those things, no news is good news. So if you don't hear from somebody from administration or from faculty, you are registered just fine. But in a way, I hate to say don't worry, but don't worry about this one. Yeah. They go over it uh, mm -hmm. within the first week to make sure that everyone is in the correct section and mm -hmm. has the correct lectures registered for. Mm -hmm. So you'll be okay. And mm -hmm. you're not going to get uh, dropped out of any of them. Nothing's going to mm -hmm. close on you. The number of sections that are open um, correlate to how many students need to mm -hmm. appropriately fit into right. each one. So. Don't worry, um, there's, you know, C01 through whatever number because those many, those sections are for making sure every single one of the new incoming students uh, gets a spot. And Elizabeth, you also asked uh, where and when do we pick up our parking passes and student ID cards? Um, I believe it's from security? security when I came to campus, um, I asked the security office where to go and um, it's free. You come in, you sit down, you take a picture and uh, they also give you your parking pass right there. I was maybe in and out within 10 or 15 minutes. It's um, no hassle at all. Mm -hmm. um, but when you come to campus, I don't actually know what building I was in though. Public Safety House. Public Safety House is where you go to do that. They're really great. Um, it's a one, two, three, and done kind of a situation. And uh, they'll tell you where to put the parking uh, decal on. Your ID is really important too because if you're driving to campus, street parking does, we do have street parking, um, but it does fill up pretty quickly. So those IDs do let you into the um, parking lots um, and they'll open the gate for you um, and things like that. So that's gonna be really important to get. And um, please know your student ID number as well. Um, mm -hmm. That's going to be asked for over and over in many different situations. Um, so just be well versed on that or have it written in your phone or a little memo or something like that because um, that's really good to know, that number. And it should be on your welcome packet, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. On the upper right hand corner. Right. Mm -hmm. And on August 25th, if you've done all the necessary steps, we hope to have all the ID cards that night and you can pick up the decals and such. So, and, and be mindful too that the Wagner ID for some of our clinical facilities we use as an ID. Mm -hmm. So it isn't just for college. Um, some of our clinical agencies like us to have you display it as well. And you'll see and you'll learn all about that. Mm -hmm. Um, another question, uh, let's see, this is, hi Dennis, how are you? Uh, what exactly are the codes to order the book bundles online? Um, I don't have them with me, but I know that you can get them from the college uh, bookstore website. And so they're there. They're usually pretty long and I wouldn't want to make any typo error. Yeah, the, um, if you call the bookstore, they'll tell you how they have their own website and um, you can, they'll, They'll give you the tools to search for those, mm -hmm. and um, you don't actually have to go in searching for the actual, um, the, you don't need those numbers ahead of time. You can totally call them, and I believe I contacted the bookstore as well mm -hmm. um, to reassure myself on what I was going to put in my cart um, online, because I did it online, and then I picked them up on campus, and it was no hassle, and they were really great. And just um, to reiterate, the bookstore number is, for those who didn't get it earlier when I said it, it's 718. 3903469 and they're open from 8:30 a.m. to 4:30 p.m. and on Friday they actually close at 4. Okay. 
I'm doing a little clock watching, and so I would suggest that if you've been a little shy, um, get your questions in now because we will be starting to wrap up shortly. Mm -hmm. um, one of the um, another question that has come up in the past, and I haven't seen it come up yet, is questions about health clearance um, and such. So all the medical yes. requirements. So if you notice that in your packet there was also the flu shot vaccination form or if you choose not to have the flu shot, there's what's called a declination form. Um, these are our requirements. We will address those more during week one. The reason why we included those is because some providers have access to the vaccinations. We'll never know exactly year to year what the availability of vaccination is for all of our students depending on where they get their um, health care from, from their primary care providers. So we like to have you get those. Keep them. We always will have extra or they're online, but keep them in a safe place. Bring them to your provider if they have um, the flu shot and you want to get it, great. If you want to decline it, we will go into this in much more detail when the semester begins. Then there will be certain things that you need to abide by, for example, wearing a mask in the clinical setting. Because if I'm not vaccinated, I could potentially then um, give one of my patients or family members or coworkers um, the flu. So we'll go into that in much greater detail. Um, that is not due week one, day one, but keep all of those documents in a safe place. In addition, Sharnika, you mentioned the planner. Mm -hmm. Another thing that my mentors had told me way back when, and I continue to try to do it, is keep either a binder or a folder of all your essential documents. Keep copies of everything. <laughs> even if we take the original, you keep a copy. Nowadays, I, I, you know, I almost say it's not even a folder anymore. Look at me, I'm holding a folder. Sometimes it's an e-folder, and if that's where you feel comfortable scanning documents yes. to preserve them or archive them, by all means do that. But always have your important documents backed up and available and such because you will be asked for them as a student many times and when you are employed, they will want to see that same material already again. Um, so I've been asked for it many times. Um, and yes, I do get tired of it, but I'm not going to change anything. So I keep them in as organized fashion as possible at the ready when I'm audited or I need to be, you know, demonstrate um, that I have all the authoritative documents. I uh, have a actual file on my computer. Um, it's just labeled health records and it's from day one coming into the nursing program and uh, we have to go through the whole physical um, situation over again um, just like all of you are doing. Um, yeah. That's why they're in August um, because they last for one year and then during the August break next August for you guys um, you'll be getting physicals again and uh, just keep that file ongoing and um, make sure you have everything. I scanned it all in and then I have my hard copies kind of put together and I've given copies to them and things like that. Mm -hmm. So everything she's saying is exactly everything we're doing. Right. Um, so Faculty as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, just, just keep in mind that uh, Mm -hmm. and, and one other specific to the medical is that there's been questions in the past because we, we require a chain of custody um, drug screen. It is a very specific test. I went to my provider. They did not do it. I had to go to a special place that had all the authorization and the accounts to do it. That is why we gave you the information of our um, campus wellness service mm -hmm. because we have not just nursing students but we have physical um, sorry, um, our physician assistant students as well who are held to many of these same requirements because they're going out into healthcare institutions that require it of us, okay? So just be mindful of that. That's why that letter has that detailed information if you are absolutely, you know, so that so mm -hmm. hopefully that makes sense because people were wondering, well, I've had it done for work. There are many different types of drug tests um, and chain of custody is a very specific one. Um, so just be mindful of that. It's, it's frustrating. I know it. I've been there. Okay. Yeah, you'll definitely learn the first round. Um, and then you'll learn why it's a specific type, um, what, it, what chain of custody means. But um, mm -hmm. just when you go into your provider, you know, maybe they can route you in the right direction. Um, I know in the welcome packet, I believe they suggested going to Quest, um, Quest Diagnostics to do it. Um, I know that uh, Quest and... Um, LabCorp sometimes, um, they'll do the same thing. Um, I've made my appointments there and it's been the exact same thing. There's That form though is the specific form that needs to be done and if maybe um, all doubts out the window, go to Quest Diagnostics. Um, maybe I spoke too soon in suggesting LabCorp, but um, 
have right. confidence in the, spe the specificity of right. what we're saying of the type mm -hmm. of urine drug screen. Right. Um, and, and Dennis, you had added on a question about are the books a good preparation for the start of the semester. Um, I think having them ready to go is always a good um, way to prepare. Um, the nerdy side of this faculty member, um, I always suggest to students see if you can read the preface uh, or the preface, however you want to pronounce that, um, because um, these textbooks give you a good guide um, in the very beginning. We don't necessarily assign it as reading about how these books are set up. Um, and then here it says, have you both managed to work even part-time while doing the program in general? What, what's your advice on that? Okay, for me, I don't work personally. Um, I feel like this program, to me, I needed my complete and undivided attention on this. However, I do have many people in this program who I am friends with who were able to uphold their job and to this day still work. So I think you should know yourself mostly. Like if you know you're the type of person who can't time manage, then probably working is not the best option for you. But if you feel like you could, then I say go for it. But you know, you might have a different opinion, <laughs> Dr. Dowling. I would probably echo the same words. Okay. It's, it's very individualized. Right. Um, I know the couple of people that I know that do work, uh, they let their employers know that um, they are taking on full-time schooling and that it's going to be, you, you can't work full-time uh, and, and survive mm -hmm. both your life and nursing school life, um, but you need to let your employer know and you need to work out those details with them um, that maybe you can cut back a couple hours um, in the beginning just to get a feel. You you really need to get a sense of the, how this nursing program is going to work and uh, you don't want to take on too much and then um, short, you know, give yourself the short end of the stick in any aspect of, of life or nursing school or anything like that. So it's definitely individualized and uh, speak with your employer and come in with an open mind that you might need to scale it back a little bit to make sure that you succeed because that's all you know all of us want for everyone coming in is to love it and succeed and everything like that the um, next question um, that said can I get a flu shot now or do I have to wait till later in the fall some season um, if a provider has it and most providers um, might not have it right now the flu shot um, we're going to talk about that more in detail. I know that Professor Woody even said she's going to talk about that day one of actual class um, mm -hmm. when she's there. Um, she'll be able to route you in the right direction with that. You don't need to come in day one with the flu shot uh, done. You don't need to have the flu shot mm -hmm. form filled out or the declination form filled out. Um, if you haven't done either of them already, that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, just come in and she'll give us more information um, about that when that happens. So we have a question here from Quincy. Hi, Quincy. Um, are second degree nursing students allowed to get on-campus jobs without work study? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not too uh, familiar with work study. But um, who can they call for that? Right, but you can call financial aid for that. Have the and they can give call. you more information about trying to get a, a, a job on campus that um, isn't actually a work study, and they can kind of route you into that direction. Um, if you do want to try and you know have a couple hours a week to something else, and um, we know we know the the income struggle of. Being a full-time student and, you know, being, you know, 28 or 29 that uh, you've lived the life in a profession before or you might be coming out of a, another degree and uh, maybe you haven't been in the workforce that long, but income is a part of life and it doesn't, life doesn't stop just because you started nursing school, so we understand completely. And, uh, yeah. So the financial aid contact info is, um, the phone number is actually 718 three nine zero three one eight three the email address is f i n as in nancy a i d at wagner dot edu that's fin aid um and they're open from eight thirty to four thirty p.m. Mm -hmm. 
Let me just make There's a, sure. several thank yous, and mm -hmm. I would say you're welcome. You're welcome. Yes, um, you're welcome. Please, if somebody did ask a question and you feel like we didn't answer it, um, just give us a little prompt and let us know. Um, I think meanwhile, we I think we're good the... to start wrapping up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I think we answered most of the questions that came into the School of Nursing. Mm -hmm. We touched on ATI. Dr. Um, Dowling, can they actually email you if they have any further questions uh, when this is finished? Yes. You can email me, but I need to let you know that I am running off to practice and take care of patients. So I will not be answering rapidly. Um, I would have to say that our School of Nursing, we pride ourselves at usually getting back to people within 24 hours when they email us and such. Um, and it is a Friday and it is a weekend and I'm going out of town. So I'm just giving you that we heads up so you too. can definitely email me, um, but just be patient as um, to how fast I might be able to get back to you. Um, and be mindful, I, I would say, it, it, don't email me with a financial aid question because you'll be very frustrated with me because I'm not going to know those answers. Those questions are best directed to um, our financial aid experts on, on campus. So mm -hmm. hopefully that makes sense. Okay? Definitely. <laughs> I can see all of a sudden a flooded email box. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll have to be like Bruce Almighty in the movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, everyone, you're so very welcome. Um, we are going to wrap up now. We see all your thank yous. And we're glad that hopefully this was helpful, um, that we answered some questions um, that were happening coming into the School of Nursing and um, that maybe you were thinking and just were hoping that we get answered. Um, we hope to see everybody um, Thursday, August 25th um, at the orientation night. We're going to be there again that you can see all the other peer volunteers that are in our um, program. Um, the 10 of us will be helping lead you through the night of, uh, or lead you through what to expect that entire evening um, about the first day and everything to come and hopefully it this helped to decrease some of the anxiety. Yes. Hopefully orientation night will help boost your confidence that you can do this. We have done it. Yes. Um, so many of our friends have done it. It's going to be great. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> have confidence in yourself. Um, you know, get some vitamin D and sun time now because, you know. One school starts. One school starts. <laughs> all bets are off. And those textbooks are going to be great. Those bundles <laughs> and ATI. But, um. Thanks for partaking in the live stream. We really appreciate it. We hope it was informative. Yes. Anything else to add? And, I mean, before it closes, I mean, not to put our, our, our colleagues here in the room on the spot, but we did have some coaching and some help. <laughs> so would you be so kind as to just say a quick hi, please, gentlemen? The video can be Yes. Uh, oh, that's a great, great. Oh, yeah, we can do like that. Great. This is Curtis Wright. Hello, everyone. I'm Curtis from the Dean of Campus Life and the Chief Diversity Officer. And I've been sending you guys emails. I will work with Shanika and Julia to get their um, tips, and we will send you that email out with the link to this, so you can rewatch it if you want. But I'll certainly make sure we get all those numbers that they gave you and those contact folks that they gave you, so that you may be able to um, rewatch this video, but also know at, in your email where you where you can get that information. Um, so. Yeah, I know I rewatched. I did the live. I was part of the live stream last year, and then I rewatched it like a yeah. week later just to make sure that my welcome packet had all the right notes on it and right. things like that. So mm -hmm. it's really great that it's going to be up on YouTube and um, that he'll supply it. Right. So I just want to say a personal thank you to everyone who had the confidence to actually uh, text us in questions, and um, I think. Uh, yes. yes. Yeah, okay. We are finished, and um, we will see you the twenty fifth. Um, we'll be there helping check in. And we're looking forward to seeing everybody. All right. Take good care now. Bye.